towards the end of March and early in April, when the uh, big dance was just slowly winding down, I told you a couple of things repeatedly. First of all, that the first three weeks of any season, but particularly in baseball, is the only time you have the advantage over the odds makers, and it's a great time to make some easy money. I also said with the playoffs, NBA playoffs, starting in the middle of the month, that you have to look at the first round series because they often offer so many big mismatches, and because you have patterns that develop over the course of the series, especially in the opening round, it's it's another prime money-making opportunity. Well, I did exactly what I said I would do. I made money the first three, four weeks of the baseball season with ease. And as you know, I got off to one hell of a start in the NBA playoffs, hitting, I think, uh, 11 of my first 12 releases. Now, the second round has certainly been more challenging. And it's kind of like that old Kenny Rogers song, which, believe me, I was no fan of, okay? But you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. And that's how I feel about the NBA playoffs, the second round. You know, it wasn't just the Toronto Raptors that made me decide to turn back to baseball yesterday, although the Raptors certainly played a hell of a big part in it with those three damn losses in a row last week. But hey, who am I to hold a grudge, right? Damn Canadians. Anyway, um, but listen, you know, clearly in these series, I did not have my pulse on these series. And as good as I was in the first round, I realized the second round, the money wasn't as easy to be made. Now, the toughest thing, I think, for gamblers out there is that when you've got seasons that are converging with overlapping sports, it's tough to focus on one because you often ignore the other. As a handicapper and a gambler, I've always found, well, i got to do double duty because, hey, it's great to win 11 of your first 12 basketball plays in the postseason. But if you're not paying attention to what's going on in baseball, when you return to the diamond, you could get crushed. So every single day, it's almost like double the work because you've got to be prepared. Be prepared, excuse me. Because you've got to know that the Golden Goose is eventually going to get slain. You've got to know that for that great three-week run that you may be having in one sport, sooner or later it's going to come to an end because everything is cyclical. So I kept following baseball, and yesterday I looked at that baseball card, and I thought there is no way, as I told you before, I was betting anything, not even watching. And I did not watch the Raptors Heat game. And the Golden State game, yeah, I gave you a free play on the first half on Golden State. Gee, how did that turn out? But I looked at the baseball card last night, and there was a game that was just screaming, bet me, bet me, bet me. And when that little guy's on my shoulder screaming like that, that's exactly what I do. And I called it my mismatch of the month, and a mismatch of the month it was is the Red Sox. They only had 17 hits last night, and they won 13-3 to on the run line as a ten home dog against the uh, Oakland A's to complete a three-game series, which, gee, they only scored 40 runs. And had 48 hits. Do you realize that's a good month for the Atlanta Braves and the Philadelphia Phillies who are playing tonight at Turner Field? For them combined. Yes, 48 runs and four, 48 hits and 40 runs. But anyway, I'm going to do the same thing today, guys. Uh, you got that play yesterday at a huge discount, uh, saving $60, getting it for $19. I'm one of the featured discounted plays today because I found another baseball play because I'm not touching the Thunder and Spurs, but that's the game I'm going to talk about here in just a moment. And it happens to me my baseball dog of the month. Now, in terms of the postseason, well, hey, we saw another underdog come through here last night. Uh, with uh, the one game, with Portland getting the cover. The other game, the Raptors barely holding on for the cover, laying the five, winning, or five and a half, and winning by, uh, what, six or seven at home. Favorites are 37, 25, and one so far in the postseason. But in the second round, the Chalks are only 10, eight, and one against the spread. The under, well, you had both games go over last night, and that under trend, again, something that's so cyclical, that was almost a 75% play through the first round of the playoffs, well, we've noticed the trends reversing now, because although the under is still 38-24-1 overall, no pun intended, in the second round, the under is only 9-10. and 10. In other words, 10 of the 19 games have gone over so far after both games went over last night. Home teams, 21-17 and 17 against the spread in round number one, only 10-9 and nine so far in round number two. Now, you got Oklahoma City tonight, a one-and-a-half point underdog. I am sure that that line, just like the game three line, is going to have some movement here as the day progresses. Wouldn't it surprise me to see this game go off at Pickham or Oklahoma City going off 
as a one-point choice. Because let's face it, the Thunder have thoroughly outplayed the Spurs. Yes, they lost game number three at home, but that was one that they were in it till the very end since getting blown out by 32 points in game number one. The Thunder have come to play. And they just have too many offensive options right now for the Spurs to contend with. I mean, look, Durant goes for 41 points a couple of games ago, and then Westbrook rebounds from a couple of bad shooting performances, and he goes for 35 in game number five. Pick your poison. But really, the key for the Thunder, as you have seen in this series, is they have absolutely dominated the boards. I mean, who would have guessed that Tim Duncan who has been the spitting image of the portrait of Dorian Gray. There's an old one for you, if you remember that movie. I've never seen it, but I've read about it. What can I tell you? But it's a great cliche that you can use. Hey, the portrait of Dorian Gray. The guy who never aged in the picture, well, you've seen him age before your eyes here, unfortunately, in this series. He's looking every bit of his 40 years old. I know Greg Popovich and the Spurs rested him throughout the season, as I did with Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker as well, but Duncan simply hasn't produced in this series. 7 for 25 shooting in the series, 17 points total in this series, and he has not been able to do anything on the boards after the eight rebounds he had in game number one. I don't think he's had eight rebounds total in the past four games because the Thunder have done an outstanding job on the boards, led by Stephen Adams. He had 12 points, 11 rebounds on Monday's game number uh, five win. He uh, averaging 10.2 points and 12 rebounds in the series. He's had double-figure rebounds in every game of this series with 11 boards in each of the last three. But it's not just him. Ennis Cantor has come off the bench, and he's played great. 9.7.6 rebounds in this series. And the byproduct of controlling the boards, of course, means that Westbrook is able to get the Thunder out in transition and able to get some cheap points that way and get the fast break going. But also, don't discount the fact of what these two guys, the big guys for the Thunder, have done defensively against LaMarcus Aldridge. Remember in games one and two where he just, you know, was absolutely crazy. Uh, what, he averaged close to 40 points at nearly 75% of his shots. More pedestrian numbers, however, for Aldridge in the last three games, just 21.3 points a game, and he's only shooting 36.7% in those three games. So you have some issues here. You have the Thunder. Let's say it even goes off at Pickham. I got to think you go with the Thunder. Why am I not using, however, Oklahoma City? Well, for two reasons. One, I really like my baseball dog of the month, and I see a chance with plus money here to make a, a much better return on my investment. And two, these are still the Spurs. These are still the San Antonio Spurs that have been there before. But do you realize, I looked this up, Greg Popovich, 2-10 and 10 straight up when facing elimination in the playoffs, and it's an elimination game tonight. Does Leonard get it going offensively again? Does Aldridge get it going? Does Tony Parker stop hogging the ball, taking shots that he shouldn't be taking instead of putting the damn ball in Leonard's hands, which is what the Spurs need? Do I think Tim Duncan's going to turn back the clock after five miserable games? No, okay? So it's got to be Leonard and Aldridge to get the job done. I don't know if the Spurs can do it. Listen, I'll back the Thunder in this game. I think it's going to be a fascinating game to watch, but it would not surprise me to see the Spurs pull off the win. Hey, listen, after all, think about that game the other night. I mean, they were up seven. They were up seven late in the game. And then the Thunder go on a 13-3 row in the final four minutes and 16 seconds to pull out the 95-91 win. I mean, it's been a strange series. Again, one that started with a 32-point blowout. So I lean toward the Thunder, but really just going to be watching as a fan. I think the better of the two free plays tonight is actually taking the St. Louis Cardinals minus the dollar forty against the Angels in Anaheim. Adam Wainwright, a guy who has made me a hell of a lot of money over the years, is not the Adam Wainwright of old. Yes, the Cardinals have won in his last three starts, but it's more because They've given him 27 runs of support in those games because otherwise he's given up 17 hits and 10 runs in 17 and two-third innings in that three-start stretch. But Weaver for the Angels is not the Weaver that was the 89 to 90 mile per hour flamethrower. Well, not really a flamethrower. His velocity actually started decreasing about five years ago. But as recently as 2011, 2012, he was still touching you know, somewhere around 93 on the radar gun, but averaging about 90. Do you know he topped out at 83 miles per hour in Saturday's loss to Tampa? 
Cardinals have taken the first two games in the series. 8-1 on Tuesday, 5-2 uh, uh, last night. They have won 9 of 12 games on the road since starting the season with those three straight losses in Pittsburgh. The Angels are just 6-11 and 11 at home. They've lost 7 of their last 8 games overall. They're 0-5 on this current homestand at the Big A with just 8 runs scored and a collective team batting average of 197. Hey. I got to go with them. They only have 11 hits in the first two games of the series. They were limited to four last night. So I got to go with the Cardinals minus $1.40 is your other complimentary play. And to be honest with you, again, that is the stronger of the two complimentary plays. Listen, the charity play of the week one again the other night, courtesy of Scott Delaney. I believe that's five or six straight weeks now. You can get all the details, the donation details, by simply scrolling down here underneath the video. Remember, I'm not beyond bribing you. You have uh, substantial discount coupons that are available as well. Uh, courtesy of Scott winning that charity play that could save you anywhere from $50 to $175 on various package buys. Get them all and all the details and the coupon codes over on the homepage. I wish you well, guys, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow when we do this one more time.